me get my mic on. There you go. Welcome to worship here at First Church. My name is Trey Turpak. I serve as the associate minister here. I see faces that regularly come, faces that come sometimes, and new faces. And so welcome in the name of Jesus Christ to First Church. Uh, you are welcome here, and to all those who are worshiping online, welcome. Today's bulletin, for those of you who come regularly, is a little smaller than usual, and that is my attempt at a bulletin, and we will be back to our normal bulletins next week. But within your bulletin, there's this little flyer about April, uh, which we will go through just for some announcements. Today, after worship, you're welcome to come downstairs where we'll have refreshments and coffee, and then Edika and I will be uh, going through a two-part series this week and next Sunday about hymns. When you look at hymns, are you confused? And if you are, come on down and we'll t tell you the basics about hymns. Um, we look forward to that. Bring your music to. And then later today, you're all invited at 3 o'clock uh, for the crop rally, the crop walk rally. It's not the crop walk, but the rally for the crop walk, because the crop walk is next uh, in May, May 5th. So next month, May 5th, look forward to the crop walk. If you want to join our pantry pacers team, uh, you can just let me know or let uh, Lynn Furrier know, our pantry coordinator. But this afternoon, uh, we will give out awards to those who participated in the crop walk in Albany last year, and then we'll also hear some presentations uh, about what happens, what, where do these funds go, and how are they used. So look forward to that. We're expecting 50, 60 people, so uh, come in. There's also refreshments. That's how we get you there. And then on April 15th, we're hosting a special conversation a conversation about peace building in the Holy Land. Uh, and so you're invited to join us in Churches for Middle East Peace. Uh, and if you want to know more information about that, not to put him on the spot, but you could see uh, John Parlerberg after the service. There's also more um, information in the lobby. On April 20th, we are going to have a our first gardening day. Um, we'll probably have two gardening days, but we're getting ready for spring. And so from 9 to 11 p.m., join us, bring your gardening tools, no? A.M., yeah, don't come p.m. That would be a bad time to come. <laughs> a.m., from 9 to 11 a.m., uh, bring, bring any tools you might want to use, uh, gloves and so forth. Um, it, I heard that it's also the Albanese uh, Earth Day cleanup, so there will be other people all around Albany cleaning up green spaces as well. So uh, you could always jump in on one of those groups afterward. And then at the end of the month is uh, the installation service for myself. Uh, a few of you have asked, what is an installation service? Uh, and I kind of likened it to, it's like a swearing-in service. Um, as a president might be sworn in, uh, I'll be formally um, installed here at First Church. And then finally, on the back, you'll notice this is the nominations form. If you want to nominate anyone for elders, deacons, or trustees, you can nominate them. Um, maybe talk to them first, too. Uh, and you can put this in my box if you choose to nominate those folks. But hear this good news. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Alleluia. Please join me in the call to worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. We come seeking Jesus, the light of the world. Shine in our hearts, Lord Jesus. We believe in the power of God to illuminate even the dark places. For the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Lord, in this hour of worship, kindle in us the light of your love. Let your light shine through us now and forever. Will you rise in body or in spirit for our first hymn, an Easter hymn, Christ is Risen, Shout Hosanna.
Now that we have entered God's presence, we come before God to confess our sin to God and one another so that we might be reconciled. And so let us pray this prayer of confession together. Risen Lord, we confess our tendency to walk in darkness, deceiving ourselves and denying our sin. But in your light, we find truth and forgiveness. Today, we humbly confess our sins, knowing you are faithful and just to cleanse us. Empower us to walk in fellowship with you and one another. Amen. In today's sermon text, we hear about that God is light, and in God we can know true life. And so, beloved, in God's light, in God's presence, there is no condemnation. Know that your confessed sins have been forgiven, and God's love cleanses you. And so embrace fellowship with God and one another, and you'll experience the joy of abundant living. The peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Today, let's get up and pass the peace to one another and maybe share what you're going to do with the eclipse, if you're going to go and watch it or not. Let's greet one another. Peace be with you. Hi. Good to see you again. Yes. yes. Will the children join me up front for a little children's message? today. I hear it's probably the end of spring break. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> do anything fun for spring break? What would you do? We went to Connecticut. Ah, okay. Nice. And are you looking forward to tomorrow with the eclipse? Are you going to go and try to see it maybe? Yeah. yeah? What are you going to do when you are looking at the eclipse though. Wear glasses. That is a good idea. That is a good idea. In today's Bible passage, we hear that God is light. God is light. What do you think that might mean? Hmm. That's a tough one, isn't it? You have something, Thaddeus? Maybe? No. All right. Well, God is light. You got something, Claire? God is the light of the world. Yes, yes. And then we hear Jesus say that you also are the light of the world and to shine your light. But back to the glasses today. 
we can think of the Bible a bit like our glasses so we might see God. We see all the light in the world, the, the stars at nighttime or the eclipse, or maybe how we look out into the world with our sunglasses on and we can see more things in the distance. Yes, that is. Does that mean spring is over? No, spring has just started. Spring has just started. But today, I want to remind you that the Bible is like those glasses so that we can see all the light in the world and that you also are a light in our world. Let's pray. God, who is light, we thank you that you invite us to walk in the light. We ask that you bless these children as they learn to walk in the light and how they are light to us. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Thank you. We move to our prayer for illumination, which we will say together. God, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Illuminate your word for us today so we might walk in the light of your ways. Amen. Before we jump into the reading of the passage, I thought I would share some things about this wonderful book of 1 John. Uh, if you look at your Bibles, 1 John is next to 2 John and 3 John. Uh, they're probably a package together. 1 John is the longest, and then 2 John's a little shorter, and then 3 John is very short. And many scholars think that they came together, that 1 John is the main letter, and maybe 2 John was the envelope it came in, and then 3 John was a note, like a post-it note on the front. Uh, which is fun to think about. Most scholars think that uh, these three books were written by the same author, maybe the same person who wrote the Gospel of John, but it certainly has all the themes of the Gospel of John, themes like love, light and darkness, joy and fellowship, eternal life and truth. And so let's see if you hear any of those themes in our text today. Hear these words from the book that we love. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. What we have seen and heard, we also declare to you so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, while we are walking in darkness, we lie and we do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not ours only, but also the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is uh, the second Sunday of Easter, which is Eastertide. Eastertide. I like Eastertide. It's a kind of an old word to say. It's almost as if the tide has come in, the tide of resurrection and new life. 
It's why we wear robes and have gold things and flowers everywhere. It's Easter time and spring. And so this passage about confessing our sin, and as the author seems to remind us, don't deceive yourself, you've got sin in there somewhere. This passage doesn't seem to square necessarily with Eastertide. There's also this complex idea that God is light. What on earth does that mean? What does it have to do with confessing our sin? But I think the most odd part of the passage for me is the first chunk, the bubbling over of excitement. Just listen again to the elation and the eagerness to tell these Christians to repent. We declare to you that from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life, this life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify it and declare to it. And to add to this eagerness, the author writes at the end, we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. What's with all the excitement? with this light, with this confessing of sin, and what does it have to do with this season of Eastertide? Let me share with you a story to try to illuminate this passage. This is a story from a professor of mine, uh, Dr. Todd Chaffee. Uh, in fact, Cameron and I met in his ministry class Cameron will tell you that I was the annoying kid who wouldn't stop talking. Um, Maybe that's still true today. But Dr. Chaffee is responsible for a major program at our undergraduate college called the Calvin Prison Initiative. The CPI program awarded degrees of faith and community service uh, to inmates at Hanlon Prison in Ionia, Michigan. It's based on a similar program in Angola Prison in Louisiana. Many of the students in this program, if not most of them, will be in prison for life. The purpose of the program is to invest in these inmates to help make the prison system more humane and to hopefully lower the recidivism rate. That is, that awful cycle of people coming out of incarceration only to go back in. What the Calvin Prison Initiative has proven is that every dollar that the state of Michigan paid towards this program, they save four dollars in the coming five years. Investing in our own saves us money. But that's not the point of this story today. There's a special story in our CPI program, and it comes from an inmate's name, Val. Val wanted to settle score, to settle a score with a young man in his neighborhood. And so one day he went to that house, he knocked on the front door, and that young man who he wanted to settle the score with opened the door, and in exchange, he ended up killing this young man. Val left this young man on the living room floor only for his mother, Jerlene, who was upstairs to come running downstairs and find her son there. Val was eventually caught. And at the trial, Jerlene talked of her loss and deep grief, for her son is gone forever. But she also made it known that she forgave Val because she believed that's what Jesus wanted her to do. Val was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. And over the years, Jerlene would reach out to Val by letter and phone. She would tell him that she wanted Val to live his best life maybe a bit like our passage, Jerlene wrote to Val concerning the words of life. 
but Val never accepted the letters or the phone calls. Years later, Val got into the Calvin Prison Initiative program, and his Christian faith was rekindled, and he felt a, a call to ministry within the prison system. But Val confined, it confided with Dr. Chaffee that Jerlene had been reaching out to him, and he didn't know what to do about it. After some encouragement, eventually Val decided to respond to Jerlene. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive only ourselves. And so one day, Val got a hold of Jerlene on the phone. They hadn't connected for over 20 years. And on that phone call, Val decided to walk in the light, and he asked Jerlene for forgiveness. Jerlene, just as she had said on the day of the trial, in all those letters and in all those phone calls, of course I forgive you. But the story doesn't end there. Jerlene was after joy, as our passage puts it, that our joy may be complete. Jerlene told Val that she had heard he lost his mother a while back. And so there on the phone, 20 years later, her he motherless and she sonless, Jerlene wondered aloud if she could be his mother. And Val, forgiven and shocked by this invitation, agreed. And so now Jerlene calls Val her son, and Val calls Jerlene Mother Jerlene. And Dr. Chaffee said that on graduation day a few years ago, which is held in the prison, he couldn't help with tears pouring down his face as he watched Val cross the stage to receive his diploma. Val had a grin ear to ear, and his mother Jerlene was in the crowd cheering him on, saying, that's my boy, as every proud mother would do. Friends of Jesus, that's a story to write home about. A story like that, how could you not write like how we started this letter? We declare to you what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Because of Easter, because Jesus has defeated death and darkness and misery, we live in a world where the light has shined, but the darkness did not overcome it. We live in a world where wrongs can be made right. We live in a world where maybe it doesn't always work out that way, for Val and Jerlene, but it's possible. Friends of Jesus, this is your story too. You have a story of light, a story of God in your life. Do you see it? Can you think of becoming more like this story, having more stories of light that you can create in the world? For at different points in life, we are all Jerlene's and we are all Val's. But because of Jesus Christ, our Easter hope, the only true failure is to say we have never failed. We'd only be deceiving ourselves. So go, make your joy complete. Confess and forgive. Reconcile and know the light and life of God. For God, who resurrected Jesus Christ, lives in our very world in all those places of light. And you will know it if only you walk with him. Amen. Let's pray. Risen Lord, in this season of new life, in Eastertide, stir within us a thirst for truth and righteousness and empower us to walk in your light 
so we might confess our sin and experience your joy. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Will you rise in body or in spirit to sing our hymn of response, Jesus, Light of Joy. Due to our lack of room in my tiny bulletin, today I will just read to you from Our World Belongs to God. Uh, someone asked me the other day, where do you get all these things from? It's from this book that says Our Faith, and it's the collected ecumenical creeds and confessions of the Reformed Church in America and our partner denomination. And this comes from our partner denomination. It says this, we rejoice in the goodness of God. We renounce the works of darkness and dedicate ourselves to holy living. As covenant partners in our congregation, set free for joyful obedience, we offer our hearts and lives to do God's work in the world with tempered impatience, eager to see injustice end. We expect the day of the Lord we are confident that the light which shines in the present darkness will fill the earth when Jesus Christ appears. For our world belongs to God. Amen. We will now receive the tithes and the offering.
you can actually remain standing for our Eucharistic hymn, and you'll notice today that we have the author in our very presence today. This is a hymn written by John Parlerberg, and so we will sing the first three verses today as we enter into our time of communion. You may be seated. This table is for all, all who want to walk in the light in fellowship with the risen Christ. And so come, come to the table. If you have not received your little uh, communion kit, just raise your hand and a deacon can come by and uh, bring it to you. Next month for the first Sunday of the month, we of course will have communion. And that is also Heritage Sunday, where we will uh, be participating in communion in the traditional way that first churches had communion. And so we look forward to that, and today we look forward to communion as well. But please follow along in your liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy and right it is, and our joyful duty to give thanks to you at all times and in all places, O Lord, our Creator, almighty and everlasting God. For you have created heaven with all its hosts and earth with all its plenty, and you have given us life and being. You preserve us by your providence. But you have shown us the fullness of your love by sending into the world your Son, Jesus Christ, 
the eternal word who has made flesh for us and our salvation. For this precious gift of this mighty Savior who has reconciled us to you, we praise and bless you, O God, with your whole church on earth and with all the company of heaven. We worship and adore your glorious name, saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most righteous God, we remember in this supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by your Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. And in the joy of his resurrection and in expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices, together proclaiming the mystery of the faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. So send your Holy Spirit upon us now, we pray, that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be to us communion with the body and blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of the faith and grow up in all things into Christ our Lord. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf and these grapes from many hills into one cup, grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Now is a good time to open your communion kits. On the night that he was betrayed, having fellowship with those who wanted to walk in light with him, Jesus took bread and he broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Eat of it in remembrance of me. And after they had eaten, he took the cup. And pouring it out, he said, This is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Friends, the bread which we break is to us communion with the body of Christ, and the cup which we bless is to us communion with the blood of Christ. Let us now partake together. Now that we have been fed at Christ's table, we come before him with our prayers. And so let us pray. Gracious God, as we gather in communion, our hearts are stirred by the sharing of your sacred meal. We thank you for the gift of your revelation, your word, for through scripture and through all the little lights of the world, we see you alive and well. Lord, we're reminded that we see the light of others and people and events and ideas. And we thank you for these glimpses of your presence and truth. We ask that you might draw us closer to you. And so we ask in our congregation, O oh God, that you might shine light on those members who feel as though they are in darkness. May we become vessels of your love and grace, reflecting your truth in our word, and actions. Guide us in our witness to your good news. Make us excited to share the good news that is Jesus Christ, the light of the world. We also lift to you our city of Albany, asking that your light shine brightly in every neighborhood and community. Bring healing where there is brokenness, hope where there is despair, reconciliation where there is wrongdoing and division. May your love be evident in all the aspects of our city's life and make us agents of your light. 
We also pray for this country, the United States, that your light would illuminate a path forward. Grant wisdom and discernment to leaders that they may govern with justice and compassion. Help us work together for the common good, seeking unity amongst our great diversity. And God, we lift up our world to you, knowing that your light shines in every corner of the earth. May your peace and justice prevail, and may all peoples come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Use us as instruments of your peace, spreading light wherever we may go. Let us pray now as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We rise in body or in spirit for our sending him. Friends, you are welcome, you are invited, you are urged to walk in the light. For in the light you will know joy and life, and so walk with him who is light. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Amen. <laughs>